This week on NBA G League Takeover, we're taking a look at J.D. Davison as he breaks the franchise scoring record with the main Celtics. Plus, G Leaguers are representing USA Basketball. We learn about that. And later on, we're talking to an OG of the G League. All that and more coming up on NBA G League Takeover. Big win. Big win. On top. Welcome, everybody, to NBA G League Takeover. Mike Davis here with Gianna Hearn. Gianna, a lot to break down around the G. We're going to start with around the G. Let's start with a guy who's killing it when it comes to the main Celtics, uh, a stud from Alabama, J.D. Davison. I mean, he's kind of like, I'm going to, my name's Mike Davis. I I wish it was Davison, but I'm going to say we're brothers. Listen, this guy just broke the franchise scoring record for the main Celtics. He's been doing it night in, night out. Gianna, tell us what makes this guy so special. I mean, he's uber athletic. He's only 22 years old, and he's considered a veteran on this team. I mean, you have someone like Baylor Shireman coming on to this team, an older uh, rookie, but they view him as a vet, JD. But JD is also coming off an NBA championship with the Boston Celtics. I mean, as a two-way, you don't get to play with them, but he's entering his third year, just smashing it. In the first two games in the G League season, he had 61 points right off the bat. And I think he needed like 66 to get the scoring title, which he didn't even know going into the season. He actually was saying, I don't know anything about the title, just wanted to come out and do my job. And he, was, I think he did it on a free throw. The crazy thing yes. is he played 18 games in his first season, 16 in the second, and four games this season. So in 38 games, he's already the franchise leading uh, scorer for the main Celtics. He's also the all-time leader in assists. So he's really doing it. You know, he's not just dropping buckets. He's also helping out his teammates. And have you seen, you know, I don't want to make this sound, but his physique, he really takes (laughs) care of his body. I mean, this is something that if you're going to be a professional in the NBA, they want to see that you can change each year. Your body's looking leaner. Maybe you're putting on muscle depending on what position you're in. But J.D. Davison has come into year three saying that he's wanting to get a full-time spot in the NBA. And he's trying to do everything he can, making sure he's up to date on everything physically, make sure he comes in as a leader, even though he said he still wants to learn from other people. Yeah. I mean, he just has his mindset right this year. I, he looks good. He's playing good. It's a lot of good stuff coming out of Boston. I want to ask you this before we move on to the next topic. Do you see, I mean, listen, Gianna, you know the G better than anybody. Do you see from the trickle-down effect – franchises, organizations like the Celtics. Yeah, they've been a top-tier organization for my entire lifetime, pretty much. They win the NBA championship. Is Does it make sense that teams succeed in the NBA and they also have these G League franchises that are playing so well and have such top-tier talent and guys killing it at the G League level? Yeah, and definitely in the last several years because now that there's a one-to-one affiliation with every team, their NBA and the G League, they have the – same plays sometimes they have a lot of the same language they want it to be seamless when the players come from the g league up to the nba so it makes sense that there's that symmetry that you're talking about so there's a lot of cohesiveness between the nba and the g league and those organizations and their structures so i like seeing that okay especially let me add if you look at miami you got to look at miami and sioux falls uh sky force i mean yeah, they're they're just top tier when it comes right, to that. and that's another. I mean, we all know Pat Riley, his influence, and everything that they do uh, in Miami as well. Another top tier organization. Let's move on to a guy who uh, we love and we know very well, Modest Buzelis. Uh, obviously, he played with uh, the Ignite here last season. Now he's a rookie playing with the Chicago Bulls. You know, he's a guy when he gets time in the NBA, he hasn't actually played that bad he looks pretty good the problem is he's only clocked double digit minutes three times this season in his 12 NBA games of play he was even uh you know shooting well from beyond the arc three for three from downtown versing uh, the top first place Cavaliers but then he got sent down to the G League Gianna and in his uh debut with the G League I mean 24 points 10 boards two assists 20 years old uh tell us all about Modest and what's going on there why do you think they sent him down to the G well this is expected I mean Modest is someone that needs to put more weight on his frame he needs to get a lot of minutes to get the experience and reps I mean he did have reps obviously when he played with Team Ignite in the G but he still needs more as we're seeing, when he when he plays in the NBA, when he plays for the Bulls, does he affect the game as much as they want him to? No, but he just doesn't have the reps. He's young. He needs this. So yeah. this is expected for him to come down. 
But it's also expected when he does come to the G League that he needs to have big performances like this. You can't be a top NBA draft pick and then come to the G League and not perform. You know, that at an organization would be like, hey, come on. Um, so I think Modest is doing his job. He's okay. doing what he can when he's up with the big team. And when he comes to the G League, we've seen one performance. His team did lose in overtime. Yes. But he still made a statement. Okay, so he's making a statement. He's doing his thing in the G. When he sent down after, you know, 12 games of play as a rookie and all that stuff, you think a lot of that is coming more so, and I mean, it might be a case-by-case basis, but you think it's coming more from, like, a Billy Donovan, the head coach, or is it coming more from GMs and that kind of stuff? Uh, I, I think those two things are one and the same, to be honest. I think they're pretty closely tied. But Billy Donovan probably, I would think, has more of a say. I mean, he knows how he wants to use his roster. He knows how, you know, game by game the matchups. Yeah. So I think he just – he also knows the traveling schedule. There's a lot that goes into thinking about when you assign a player or if you have a two-way player come up and down. In Modest's case, an assignment player. Uh, there's a lot that goes into thinking. So I would assume the it's, head coach's job. Yeah. And last thing on this, do you think, I mean, a guy like that who's struggling to find time in the in his rookie season, not clocking double-digit minutes, he comes down to the G League, gets that game under his belt, and he almost has, you know, like, you know, 24 points, 10 boards, 2 assists. Does that get his confidence going, right? That's a good thing just from a confidence standpoint that he can parlay when he goes back up to the NBA, right? Yeah, obviously. I mean, Modest, I think he would be disappointed in himself. We have both interviewed him and know him well. Uh, he's very confident, and I wouldn't say cocky, but he knows what he can do, and he thinks he's the best. Yeah. So I think he would be disappointed had he had not had a great showing in the G League so that when he does go back up to the NBA team, he can say, you know, I, I did what I should, and I'm ready to do it here as well. I don't I don't think he lacks any confidence when he gets on the NBA court. I really just think this is a, a rep thing yeah um i think we'll see much more from modest in the okay. nba yeah he, he's got it all it's just a small sample size still early in his rookie season let's move on the last thing here and around the g we got to talk about the iowa wolves so since 2015 2016 season for the first time the iowa wolves went four and oh to kick off the year they've been looking good uh one guy we uh are going to be talking to in a little bit dacian nicks been playing well for them, Leonard Miller as well. They just fell the other night. They got their first loss, the Indiana Mad Ants, 103 to 112. But Leonard Miller, this guy, 34 points, 15 boards, two blocks, one point shy of his career high. We got a minute here left, G. But Leonard Miller, I mean, double-double every game. Iowa Wolves look good at 4-1. and one. Uh, They look really good, and they're going to look even better. They actually have a new assignment player. 27th pick from the NBA draft, Terrence Shannon Jarp. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, <laughs> Terrence Shannon Jr. He is coming to the G League as well. We just found that out today. So the Iowa Wolves, they're just stacked. And, I mean, anybody who's played with Leonard Miller, every teammate, every coach has spoken about how smart he is and how good of a player he is. And he just continues to dominate. I mean, for me, I I'm wondering when we're not going to see Leonard in the G League. Wow. Okay. So uh, Leonard, Dacia Nix, they got that one-two punch going there with the Iowa Wolves. A lot of great stuff happening there. When we come back after a short break, Gianna got to speak with Dacia Nix. We're going to be learning more about this young man and all the great stuff he's doing down in the G League coming up after the break. Welcome back to NBA G League Takeover. Now we're going to hear an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview Gianna had with the Iowa Wolves, Dacian Nix. I'm here with Dacian Nix from the Iowa Wolves and Minnesota Timberwolves. Dacian, what's up? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, I felt like we had to have you on the show after you exploded for 45 points early on in November. Walk me through that performance a little bit because it was a statement. I mean, it was a statement, but, like, I've been through the G League before, so I understand, like, NBA, what they want to see, and just everything that comes with the G League. It's like a – I know it's a lower step from the NBA, but it's like they play harder. Everybody, Everybody's in the G League for a purpose. And when you say harder, do you think it's because everyone's fighting for a spot, like they're trying to get back up to the NBA or getting their first shot? Why, why would you say it's harder? Uh, yes, of course. Everybody wants a shot in the NBA. And then you got a lot of people that was already in the league that's trying to get back into it. So it's like everything about the G League is just every, everything is intense. 
let's talk about your specific journey a little bit. And then we're going to get to the Iowa Wolves because you guys have had a, a really great start. Uh, your specific journey, you know, you went from a two-way, then you had a standard contract for two years, and now you're back on a two-way. What's that journey been like, kind of the ups and downs? I, I've interviewed, obviously, a ton of players in the G and in the NBA, um, and they talk about just the mental aspect of it. What's that journey been like for you to, you know, fight for a taste of it? You get there, and now you're fighting for a taste again. Uh, it's been a long journey, but it's I've been grateful. Just just being able to stay part of an NBA team has been has been great. I know it's mentally hard, but I wouldn't really say it's mentally hard if you just stay prepared the whole time. What is the difference between obviously there's a contract, but what's the difference for you mentally when you're a standard contract player and when you're two way? Do you feel any different when you're attacking a game? Uh yeah, of course, because like a two way, you have you have no clue if you're gonna get in the league. I mean, get in the game, of course, but like a standard contract, you're you're assuming that you're gonna get in, get in. Like you don't have no doubts that you're not gonna get in. Basically, tell me what your kind of everyday life is like right now as a two way, because we get a lot of questions, and I try to explain to people what that's like. Um, you kind of can be pulled at any given moment. So, what's your daily life look like as a two way? Uh, say it's like a practice day. Like a regular standard practice day, we have practice in the morning, go through practice, and then, of course, extra shots after practice because, you know, you didn't get into, get into practice reps with the team. So, of course, extra shots, and then it just depends on the team if they want to send you back to the G League or if you're already in the G League, as like I am right now. They can call me up whenever they actually want. It could be like right now, the next two or three hours. It's just staying ready, basically. And when you get called up and you're on the bench, you don't know if you're going in that game or not. Uh, how do you just stay ready? Because I know they always tell athletes, like, you got to stay ready, stay ready. But then the moment comes and you get the call up and you get on the NBA floor. Uh, what are the thoughts going through your mind? Uh, with me, with staying ready is like getting that extra shots and get into the get into the arena extra early. That's what I do now, because being being here, being in the league for four years, I get to the arena extra early run the stairs if I need to, just to stay in shape. And just all the extra stuff that nobody else sees. Obviously, I followed your journey from Team Ignite onwards. And so I've seen a lot of iterations of Dacian now, almost four years in. Your confidence, we've talked about this before, has grown exponentially. Are you that confident when you step on an NBA floor versus the G League floor? Is it the same confidence or is there kind of like, uh, what are you feeling? Do you feel like you belong when you're playing in the NBA? Yeah, of course. But like there's there's sometimes like, you know, I ain't played in the league. I mean, I ain't played in the game for 10 plus games. So it's like stepping back on an NBA court, playing against the people that you've been watching all along. is like it's still like hard to see, hard to hard to bring in. But staying ready, I don't think it's any difference. Just the amount of shots that you get is the only thing that's different. And obviously you get to pair with Leonard Miller. I interviewed you during Summer League. Now you guys didn't play together for Team Ignite, but you're both from the same family. Um, how do you see that has helped you both in your journey so far? I mean, you both are killing it with the Iowa Wolves and with Minnesota Wolves or Timberwolves. So how, do you guys find commonality there? I know last time I spoke to you about this, you said you guys ha didn't really talk about Ignite ever, but what's that like having someone that's gone through like a similar experience? Uh, it's been good, especially Lenny, because he has like a lot of talent, but... Of course, our Team Ignite guys got to stick together. So I think just him being here with me and me kind of taking it under, me, under, under my wing has helped him a lot and helped myself like become a leader, especially on the court. Being a point guard, you got to put people in position where they succeed. So I think that's what I've been doing. And then being with Lenny, he can do everything on the court. He's just, that's, he, can be, he can be a ball handler. He can be the foreman. He just do everything on the court. So it's good. Your team in general, has been doing pretty well. 4-0 at this point when we're recording. Now you have a game uh, tonight, so we'll see what happens after that. But why are you guys so successful in Iowa? Uh, I think there's a lot of things. We all like each other. I think that's just the biggest thing, especially being with teams, G League teams, because, you know, everybody fighting for a spot. So I think we all like each other. We do stuff outside of practice. We play card games together. Like the other day here in Indianapolis, we actually went bowling together as a team. So I think us just staying with each other and just, and that's just helped us a lot. All right. So yeah, I'm definitely part of Dacian Nation. That's what, that's what the fan, that's what all the fans of Dacian are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it about this young guy that is uh, so striking to you?
I mean, his toughness and his determination. Every time he steps foot on the court, he has this laser focus that he just wants to be the best. And you see that in his performances that he's had season after season after season. This is his fourth season, as he mentioned. And um, Dacian's only getting better. And this is a very important season for him because around year three, you're wondering if you're in the G League. Now, he's been a two-way player every year, but you're wondering – can he stick in the NBA? And yeah. he, he's shooting a shot. He's trying to make his case, and he believes full well he can do that. I think if he consistently shows that he has uh, made sure he's doing all the precautions it takes to keep his body in shape, yeah. then I don't think there's any questions. That he could maybe be up at that next level on a permanent he, spot. Backup point guard for sure. Okay. For sure. All right. We love it, and we're definitely here at NBA G League TakeOver, part of Dacian nation coming up after a short break we got more nba g league takeover Big win. Big win on top. welcome back to nba g league takeover where we're still reminded of that great uh paris uh gold medal showing from usa basketball steph curry come in out showing out all that great stuff but eight g leaguers are actually going to be representing usa basketball at the upcoming fiba america cup qualifying window for the national team selection so we got eight guys from the g league uh one of those guys is your good friend you were just texting with him before the show david stockton tell us a little bit about what is going on with all that well, David Stockton holds a USAB, let me make sure I get this right, career record for most games and assists wow. in USAB World Cup qualifying. I mean, this just shows you how much USAB basketball he's played. He is a staple piece for the country when it comes to something like this. And I was just asking because they're in training camp right now. Why do you keep doing this? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say my He's, good friend is old or anything like that, but he plays year-round basketball. How many kids you say he I has? I think he has five now. <laughs> but he said, quote, I keep doing it because I love this country and it's the greatest honor you can have as a pr player in our profession. So he takes this very seriously. He he won't miss a window. If he's invited, he's playing. Um, but also, he just he can still play. And these are very important windows because you qualify and you win in America Cup so that you can get to the World Cup so that you can play in the Olympics. So without these G League players like David Stockton, America is not making it to the Olympics right. because the stars, they're playing in the NBA season right now. They don't have time to leave. So We're going to be diving deeper into this whole conversation next time on NBA G League TakeOver as well when we're, when we're in the studio. But David Stockton, he's got that that USA basketball in his blood. Obviously, his dad, John Stockton, member of the 92 Dream Team. So he knows everything about USA basketball and what it means to represent for this country. Real quickly, G, before we go to the break, so the eight G League guys playing for USA basketball, basketball how many g leaguers in total 22 g leaguers in total so brad jones with the g league he gave me that figure this morning and we have baba carsane former ignite player he's yeah. going to be playing um for senegal so keep an eye out on the 22nd and 25th is when the u.s plays all right all right good stuff there we'll be right back with g of the week up next big win Top. Like you said, you know, you're a physics major, and math is really like a passion of yours. It's not just like a thing you do on the side. It's something you actually love. Certainly, yeah, and it is a love and good thing too because I needed it. <laughs> I, I mean, I would I would tutor in season, man. Like I said, some of these long layovers, long bus drives we had, like yeah, man, I'm like getting tutoring kids ready, you know. And obviously, I would do it in the off season as well. Uh, but a good thing was a passion of mine because it was a necessity. It turned into a necessity. And uh, so, yeah, I just tried to make the most of it, man. Something that I knew, something that I was passionate about, something that I, you know, could do and ended up having to do. All right, welcome back to NBA G League Takeover. Mike Davis, Gianna Hearn. So, Gianna, I mean, one of the GOATs of the D League, the G League, played for the Developmental League originally, is Andre Ingram. We all remember when he came up to play for the LA Lakers, that rookie game, he scored 19 points, I think, in his <laughs> initial debut. He was like 32 years old. He became like the second oldest rookie ever as an American to play in the NBA. So it was very interesting stuff. But coming out of that interview he did with our good friend Jeff Key from uh, Certified G's, you start learning about the nuances of being a G League player especially in his heyday. When he entered in 07, the initial starting salary was $13,000. It was like 
a little under fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I recognize that well. My husband also played during those years, so, <laughs> so I've heard about that. So you know, now the now it's like around forty five thousand dollars, forty three thousand dollars. You know, as our G of the week, why did you want to select him? What what is it about him that and that interview that struck you? I mean, what is it not about him? Andre Ingram is the G League. I mean, he is the goat of this league. I have to give G of the week to him because of his impact on this league. 13 years that he's played, and over those 13 years, he's done significant things. Not only has he won three-point contests twice, once against Jimmer Fredette. Wow. Okay, he is the leading three-point shooter of the league he's made i'm trying to look at this i have it written down somewhere like 800 and something threes the second closest person to him is 200 threes behind him right. i mean andre ingram has done so much but he's helped players like mac mcclung mac has said you know thank god he played at south bay when he first did as a rookie because he had him in his pocket to kind of show him the ropes tell him about the grind who else knows it more than someone that's played 13 right. years. And he's a guy who's also the president of the Players Union. He's an all-around good dude. Uh, we heard from that uh, clip from the interview, you know, this is a guy who had to tutor students as a math tutor to make some extra cash while he was playing. You told me a story the other day about he was also a bus driver. Tell us that. Yeah, you got to watch Certified G's with Jeff Key. His show goes into all these veterans, but these are stories that he was talking about. So in the D-League days... There wasn't a lot of money going around, and so oftentimes you had to do multiple roles, so playing and also bus driving. So he said in this interview with Jeff that he was the most responsible player, so that's why they gave him the role of being the bus driver. <laughs> hey, you want a responsible bus driver, but, I mean, listen, we remember when he made it up to the NBA, it was kind of like, you know, a Jeremy Lin Linsanity kind of thing. Yes. People were so excited and happy for this guy. With three games, three days with the Lakers, he made a little over $13,000. That whole season with the G League, he made nineteen. So it just goes to show you the, the distinction there. But he's trying to make a lot of changes for the league and for the players here in the G League. So make sure you go check out Certified G's with Jeff Key. Listen to that interview with Andre Ingram. Until next time, for Gianna Hearn, I'm Mike Davis. We'll see you back here next week for NBA G League Takeover.